The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter diamond and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into Tango has worked as a technology integration expert assisting practices using software like XPlan, Coin, remember Coin, and yep. VisiPlan, wow. worked within a large group delivering advice documentation technology to its advisor members, and about four years ago became the founder of the tool we're here to discuss today. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Melanie Drake. Go. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. That was the best intro to a podcast ever. <laughs> well, we've got to make you feel welcome. That seems <laughs> only appropriate, right? You just need a sound effects board now, I think, Peter. Uh, you know what? That sounds both exciting and horrifying for me because <laughs> doing two things at once, yeah. mm, I'd have to practice a lot, I think. <laughs> I can just – I, I don't – I'd end up sending off some inappropriate sound at the wrong time. Or, oh, goodness. Can you imagine? Oh, dear. That would be great. Something to aim for. So <laughs> I'm very keen to pick your brain about all things Tango, which we'll get to. But first, we do love to take a moment to sort of ease us in and get to know you a bit through your use of technology. So tell us, what is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? Oh, emojis. Okay. So I, I know I was prepared for this question because you said I was going to ask and I thought, let me have a look at my emojis. And right. I thought it was the thumbs up one. And I went, oh, my God, that's so boring and not like me. But then I realized why I used it because when I talk to my husband or my partner, you know, when they go, oh, I'm at the shops and I want mayonnaise, instead of like conversing with them, I'm just like thumbs up. It's yeah. like the most easiest thing ever. Yeah. So half of my conversation with my partner is just like thumbs up. Okay, fine, 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 fine. <laughs> but my second big one would be uh, the rock horn because nice. I do, yeah, I do like a bit of rock music. So I just suit that quite a bit. Um, well in the purple and the half, if anyone's in land. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, well done. Oh, Fantastic. Yeah. So then our smartphones, Whew, we've got them with us all the time. Some of some people even have them on their wrist. I couldn't do it, but hey, more power to you. If you had to delete all all of the apps off your smartphone and just keep three, which ones would you keep? Okay, Spotify. I mm. have been a subscriber to Spotify since it was true. I love Spotify. I used to buy CDs. I used to be in a CD club back in the early night, late nineties. Oh, the delivery one! I was in yeah, that too. What was that called? Day Day I something? Can't but I yeah. can't remember what it's called. And it like you got and a pack, and it was the you, new CDs. Yeah, and uh, if I didn't put my CD request, I, I've got so many Pepsi chart hips. <laughs> anyway, so I was in that. So when Spotify came, I didn't have to spend a hundred bucks a month. Loved it. So that was number yeah. number one. Um, and now I listen to podcasts and all that sort of stuff, and it's good. Um, second one, unfortunately, I have to say Outlook because. I just do a lot of business on it on my phone. Yeah. And yeah. it's you just don't realise how handy it is, I reckon, having Outlook on your phone to look at calendar, do emails and stuff, so I can be on the run and just manage your business. Love it. Yeah. And the third one, which is, this is a random one, uh, but the sleep app. Ah. Because it records, you know, records yeah. your sleep. And um, this is a gift from God, my partner, who I love dearly, and he's going to kill me for saying this, his sleep talks. <laughs> So every morning I get to wake up and listen to what nonsense you were saying or singing during the night. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry, that's a great one to read. It's oh, an entertainment. That's hysterical. <laughs> I love that the sleep app is it. about their sleep. Like this isn't like yeah. you focusing on your. This is like, hey, dude, this is what you said last it's night. My entertainment. Like, oh, you're talking it. about sausages and glasses last night. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Oh, this is fantastic. That's the first time anybody said that one, I've got to say. <laughs> well, get onto it. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Well, let's dive into Tango, shall we? Sure. So just to give us to give the listener a sense, they may not have heard of you guys before. In the sort of broader, you know, advice tech space or or provider space, what category do you guys generally fall under? Um, who are you generally lined up against? Like what area do you play in? Um, quite broadly, I'm going to say the first thing people use it for is power planning, so to support platform. So yep. um, it is an aggregation type platform, so it collects all the power planners and, and we've got admin people on there as well. So I would say it's that back office support area. Yep. Yeah, so probably not in the fintech or anything else, but mostly about supporting business through resourcing. And resources. so almost, almost matchmaking, like it's almost like, oh, hey, yeah. I'm an advisor, <laughs> now I need it. Okay, okay, cool. All right. So that sort of marketplace or matchmaking thing, that makes Correct. sense. Mm-hmm. How long have you guys been like, did I see that you started in 2019? I did. Did it go but- nuts during COVID? What happened during the... <laughs> I was like, I'm going to tell you another random story. <laughs> Do I? Okay. No. This is not really. Okay. So I went... I went to a tarot card reading for fun because I just don't go around with my partner. And she and I said, oh, I've just got this business I want to start. She goes, you have to do it now. Do it now. Do it now. And I was like, oh, all right. So I kicked it on December 2019. I'm like, oh, it's always telling me it. Just before COVID hit. And then, obviously, everyone wasn't really used to working online. And obviously, Tango is a remote platform to connect with remote contractors. Yeah. So as soon as t- uh, COVID hit, um, everyone started using remote business Resources and people. And, yeah. and it, was great. it was actually great for the business. Obviously. It was a hindrance that I couldn't go out and meet people and mm. I was in, I'm in Melbourne, so it was, we were locked down for quite some time. So that was a bit of a sort of a backward step for me. But once we got out, it's it's sort of that comfort of using people remotely and having all your support stuff remote is something that people are used to now. So it's good. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because it really did rip the Band-Aid off for yeah. a lot of people yeah. um, <laughs> but because there was a lot of umming ahhing about virtual or, or remote or like, and it seemed like this insurmountable thing. And all of a sudden it wasn't insurmountable because we had no, no alternative. And it, it did make exactly. a difference to lots of businesses in terms of yep. what they could provide or what people would accept as now a given. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So, okay, so then I'm a bit, well, aside from <laughs> aside from external nudge to get you moving, I'm curious about, you know, what sort of prompted you to set up the service, you know, what was the primary problem you saw that you needed to solve? Great. Yeah, so I my background is not only the technology stuff that you've spoken about. I was a power planner for many years mm. um, at AXA and some small boutique business started in 2002, power planning. So okay. we've been doing it for quite some time. Um, and I obviously met a lot of friends who were power planners and contract power planners. And about 2017, um, I, there was about that time, I don't know if you remember, Peter, it was like there was really big turnaround times of power planners, like eight yeah. oh. weeks. Um, I, and I had a lot of advisors coming, do you know someone um, that knows this software or blah, blah. And I was like doing this matching manually. And I just yeah. thought, I think what advisor needs is transparency. They yeah. need to be able to find someone quickly without that cost of finding someone and knowing if they're good or bad. Um, and also the contractors that I spoke to, they just wanted to find work, but they weren't marketing themselves. So they're sitting right. there not being resourced. And I was thinking there needs to be a way to find them easily them without together. going on Google. So yeah. that was the idea of that is really to bring those resources to the forefront for these advisors to use. And most of the time it's those small businesses that really don't have that backing of a big licensee or whatever that just need that quick solution. Yeah. So yeah, that's where it came from, and um, and also uh, I just want to help the power planners train up and make sure that the contract power planners are not supported as well as say an employed one. Yeah. So how do we support them to make sure they're still learning and and getting the support that they need, which is something that I want to do as well. So yeah. yeah, which is great, and I think um. It's interesting. So I've got so many questions. So, <laughs> um, so one of the things that I guess um, people are probably curious about is, you know, we all use different tools, whether it's X Plan, you know, all these different things and all these different ways that we collect client data. Like, how do you guys handle that? Is it something that's in the planner's profile? Like, how does it work so you find the right match? Yeah, uh, so for the advisor. Um, so in the profile, you do sort of stipulate, you know, what software you use. 
I've even got an area called how to work with me. It's like what hours you can call me. You can put your Calendly link. You can say, I like flow charts and my thing. So you can talk about that. Perfect. What licensee you work with. On the power planner side, the, both actually have ratings. So you can get rated as an advisor. You get rated as a contractor. <laughs> awesome. So on the profile for the power planner, you can see the rating. You can see what software they've used, what licensees they work with, and bio. Um, I'm doing some upgrades soon. So you'll be able to do things like download the certificates of currency for insurance and see yep. all that sort of stuff. So it's really giving you transparency on who they are. But what usually happens, and I'll talk about how it works. Don't we talk about how it works? Yeah, yeah sure. The matchmaking yeah, yeah. works. So yeah. it's just, it's essentially you put up a job and the power planner or the admin or contractor, whomever, will say, can I do this job? They'll put a quote through. And so what you do is you get a number of quotes coming through. So it's great for those. If you just want quality, you can pick the, for the seat doesn't matter, you just pick the person you want. If you're cost sensitive, which is sometimes the case, you can yep. pick the, the cheap one and you still get a good power, a power planner. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just giving you options that way. So that, that's how the match. You get the yeah, full control okay. of the matching. And yeah. look, I you have years of experience of this. You know, me as an advisor, I did very little. I guess when I was very early training, I did a bit of power planning for a senior advisor, but really I, I dove in pretty quickly into advice. It, you know, the briefing <laughs> – and what people think power planning is varies wildly. Like some people, it's basically doing everything but talking to the client. Um, and others, it's here's a very detailed strategy. Here's all the things I want to have happen. I just need you to sort of produce it and pull it together. Is there that type of variety on the platform of what people are asking for? Or is it a bit prescriptive? How do you handle that stuff? You, and so one of my main things I wanted to do is bring flexibility. Yep. Um, I know there's a lot of things where uh, – applications use you have to use this one or use this software and and I felt like especially a small business maybe you don't have those systems in place right. or you have to use this form because compliance has asked you to do that so essentially I get a very new, many ways that people give instructions to the power planner okay. the most thing is um well we have got a form you can use on Tango but people will use their own mm-hmm. um it's however you want to do it you just got to be clear on what you want the power planners are they're very experienced career power planners in okay. most cases. So those guys, they can deal with many ways to get the information. And the beauty of Tango is they you get to form a relationship with the power planner. So you yep. get to learn how to work with them. Yeah. Um, you can chat in the, the platform so you can get all the information you need. Okay. So it's it's just a matter of working with that person. Um obviously integration is something I've considered yep. with with software. Yeah. The other problem is like I don't really need the data myself because right. they're working in the software. So I'm like, why do I need to capture that data? Yeah. The only thing I would probably need to capture is what the strategy is and all that sort of stuff. So I'm working on ways to do that a bit easier without yeah. having to get all the client data. I don't really need it. No, and, and look, yeah. it just opens up other another can of worms, right? I mean, it's just another thing to have Correct. to worry about. <laughs> um, and so then do you find people – I'm really curious about how people have been using it. So, so I mean, there's the obvious, hey, we need an SOA for this. Like, oh, okay. Is there any use for, well, I'd like just some modelling and some scenarios done or like is there some variety in what people get, you know, the um, the contractors to do? Yes, Peter, and that's exactly what, what I come on here because – I think um, people think it's a power planning business, but I'm not. I don't do the power planning. I'm match with power planners. Yep. But a lot of the power planners on there, they have lots of other skills I've done admin before. So on Tango, you can actually choose, I want to do an SOA or I want someone just to help me with this one-off piece of admin work I have or FTS. But there'd be, and obviously I'm not going to try to take away from this and have regular work. This sure. is for, I imagine, one, like just one-off stuff. I need something done quite quickly. Yep. Um, I'm I'm. I don't intend to step on anyone's toes, but if you need something done, there's small businesses. You don't have to sit there and spend time trying to find someone. Just go and tango, list a job, someone does it, and it's done. And so you can get that thing off your plate. Um, It's also, yeah. Yeah, and it brings me sort of to my next question with, well, you know, and I hate to curse this all with what I'm about to say, but with QAR, whatever the hell is going to happen and who knows um, what will or what's going to come out of it. But but I think, look, the truth is it's going to change, right? So, So what will go to clients or what they get will change. I'm assuming then part of, of this flexibility means that your t- your team, the people that you've got, sorry, as, as contractors can then adjust what they provide. You know, it might not be as much about the detail this way as it is doing the analysis, pulling together the strategy and turning it into, I don't know, a PowerPoint or it might be, you know, whatever it can be means you guys can just flow with that. It's it's not a big deal. Exactly. It just, yeah, it's down whatever to what the need. individual requests, yeah. So obviously I'm aware that there'd be licensees that say, this is how you still got to provide the things to clients. So yeah. the power planners will work with that. 
Yeah. Um, and there'll be other smaller businesses which they currently don't have templates now. Yeah. We'll just say you help us as long as it's compliant so that we're going to work towards helping with that once it comes out. What does yeah. that look like? And um, yeah. yeah, my intention is just to give some templates to some advisors as well. So um, yeah, I honestly, I can't imagine the power plants will still do all the other work and they're happy to do that. So the, even if to, it's just absolutely. the modeling. <laughs> right. Just well, and the, the key to me, and it's where we got, because this stuff is crazy making, right? If you try to predict and then adjust and then read the news and then adjust and then like you'll go insane trying right. to handle it. So we sort of, you know, talked as a team and I just went, look, to me, no matter what it is, pretty much most of what we do will need to be done. It's just that it'll be internal. It'll be something on file. It'll be exactly. something that records our our methodology, the approach, you know, what goes through the advisor's head. We'll just be documenting it well internally and it might change what the client sees. But I don't actually see, aside from say the templates, like you say, that go to the client, I don't I don't see really the actual steps taken will, will be significantly different aside from, I guess, the size of things, you know, like – like the sheer quantum, and I'm thinking like half. If you talk to a power planner, they they are welcoming to the, a smaller template, but to them they can churn out stuff quicker. Yes, they can give you, and then you can get more advice done quicker. Like they love that. So yeah. bring on the smaller templates. I say, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. like you say, I do. I actually, well, certainly in the work we're doing, um, there's a lot more of this forward-looking sort of modelling, and I don't mean engineering modeling, I mean, hopes and dreams sort of thing. Like, could you take this amount of time off and then go on that trip and then, you know, pay for the kids for a house? Like, like all these wonderful things. And so being able to have somebody to go, all right, here are the scenarios. You know, the data's already in there. I need you to run some versions. Yay. You know? And that's the the thing they love. You ask, you can have a look at a survey. They love doing the modeling. And also, I don't expect advisors to go, okay, we don't need power plans. I'm going to go and learn X X Tools Plus, sorry, or whatever software that it's too much. I can't yeah. imagine advisors wanting to do that or learn it and yeah, yeah. Just stick to what they should be doing, which is saying clients. Correct. Right? Yeah. Now, I am curious, a couple of things. So have you found with some practices they're even getting to the point where, say, you know, a support person is, is loading up the brief? So, for example, they've yeah. sort of made it part of the process and now this is how they're using one of your contractors? So um, one of the features. <laughs> Tango, is they can have an account, but you can actually assign uh, another user or two or three onto your account so they can see the jobs. Perfect. So we often have like an advisor who has a support person that's loading jobs, doing all the answering questions, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. you know, you can still log in and see it if you need to answer a question, but you can have someone else sort of managing that relationship, so to speak. Yeah, and look, it's an interesting thing, particularly right now with, you know, with this is a tighter market, there are less advisors, so therefore hiring another whole body becomes tougher, you know, so utilising every possible bandwidth you can you can get. Um, and sure, maybe down the track you'll decide um, to get a body, but look, if you find somebody that works well on a contracting basis, then why not leave it like that and maybe get somebody that's more customer facing? Like who knows? Like you can really change up your model when you tap into some of these resources. Oh, I totally agree. And um, in my opinion, like I know there's a lot of contract parapoints they want the contracting. If they had enough work, they would probably do it. They love the flexibility. Yeah. So um, a lot of them being employed in the office doesn't really appeal to them as much anymore. Yep. So I think you're going to get some good resources using contractors, in my opinion, the yeah. more experienced ones. Um, not, I'm not saying that there's not that are employed. But, yeah, I think um, it's a good move. It's a good one yeah. to try. Yeah, And I love the idea that we can have different um, roles and, and resources and, and career paths in our industry. I mean, it's it's too linear at the yes, moment. I agree. We need all this sort of variety. We need people to be able to have that flexibility. I'm curious, like you've had presumably some practices that have really done this well. What were some of the things that they did well? Did they do videos for the for the power planner for briefing? Or did they, like, what do they do to really make this sort of connection really hum? I think the biggest thing which I see is the ones that communicate well, actually, and that's one of your metrics when you're advising to you. So they put a really good request forward, or at least it's clear enough to understand what's going on. Yeah. They communicate in the chat or they call the, you can actually call the power planners and you talk to them. Um, I have had had people do Loom videos to show what they're talking about, which is great. Awesome. Um, or they have a meeting, like a, a video meeting just to go through it all. But then they keep them updated with any questions like they go through it all. Um, the ones that I think struggles when they don't put enough information, they don't get any quotes coming through because people are looking at it going, I have no idea what this is about. I'm not going to quote on it. Right. So I think the biggest thing is just be clear what you on the want. Brief. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then be engaging and just don't wait for someone. Um, just 
make and uh, but likewise I say that to the power planners too when the you have to communicate you have to go back you have to answer like don't just sit there yes yeah. it's, it's a symbiotic so you have to do it to yeah. you know yeah um so yeah so um I think the communication is a big one uh I've had people that wouldn't have the correct resources at hand to help the power planner right so I think it's clear if you don't have software make sure it's clear in your request that you don't have software so they have to have software okay make it if you have it the ones with templates always seem to get good value. Really. So make sure you have the yeah. resources for them to use as well. Yeah. And probably, I mean, even the, you know, the first one you do, you know, overcook it. You know, like if you oh. think, oh, do I really need to give them that? Get, yes. Yeah. Just <laughs> like, to start. But for the first time, absolutely. Like really overdo it and then, you know, and, and perhaps even say that in the brief. Yes. Look, okay, oh, sorry, this is but... what I think you need. Here's some extra stuff just in case, <laughs> you know. And um, I actually, on the profile, you can actually put regular documents that you may always need to give power planners. So nice. put as much information on there as oh, well. Oh, fabulous. Your FSG, your templates, uh, the construction Your investment of methodology, stuff. anything. Like anything. anything that is about, right. you know, how you guys do things. And they're the ones yeah. that do well. So yeah. those people that just give you the right information. So that's my hot tip if you're using. And I'm guessing too, because one of the things that I do think will happen as an evolution of how we provide advice and you know, whatever, whether it's legislative or otherwise, is tone, storytelling, you know, the way we do things, the type of images we like, or, you know, whatever that is, to be able yeah. to put that in an advisor's profile just as yeah. it sets the scene. Yeah, 100%. You know? and, it, and, it, and it will absolutely improve the outcome. And it's so, and advisors vary so much. I have advisors that are very picky on formatting. And then others just do not give two hints about yeah. it. And I just, that, it's what the shortest document ever. Yeah. So just knowing that really helps. And I, I always I say, give, just, you probably need two goes with someone just to yeah. test them out so they get used to you. So um, yeah. don't, don't be disheartened on the first go. But um, <laughs> if they haven't written exactly how you like it. And how does the feedback? So do people type up feedback? They may get a draft. Do you find that, you know, one draft's enough or they get a bit of feedback and they tweak? Or how does that process work? Is that just done through the chat? Yeah, so so you can upload documents and they do it. Um, that's being upgraded, but I won't tell you what's happening yet because uh, mm. I'm still developing. But there's nice. going to be upgrades to how that works. Yeah, but at the moment, yeah, they give feedback, upload a different document, and usually that's included as part of the price list. A yeah, redraft, okay. if it's still the same scope. Yep. Um, it's it's sometimes if I see it's a complete change of scope, there's a something called an additional fee in time goes. So you okay. can so request additional fee if required. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, usually it's um, all included as part of that process. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and that, particularly in that first one, I mean, I know for um, <laughs> for our team, I've got, I think it's called PDF Writer, but basically it's a thing on my iPad where they'll load it up and I'm literally marking the thing up in red. And originally I can, you know, you could see their face like, oh, this feels like English in like year eight or something, right? Like this horrible <laughs> experience. But the power of it is it it's oh. quicker and more effective for both us and you know them and me because yeah. I can I can mark that stuff up really quickly. Read once, mark up. Yeah, hey, you might want to include this. Done, and they then easily can see. Whereas if I try to explain, oh, it's the third paragraph on the forty seventh page, and you've got it like it can be clunky, you know. So find ways to communicate this stuff to make it and easier. I find Peter, when that oh sorry, no, um, go ahead. But I, was, I, I find that with what you're saying is if the advisor thinks it's going to take too long to explain and do the changes, they won't put them through. Yeah. So, yes, mark up documents and do all that stuff. And, and power planners do want to know that yeah. so they can improve. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so what you said is a perfect way to do it, just making up a document, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, and often yeah. it'll just be a small thing. It's like, oh, yes. hey, this was missing. Or, yeah, and it, like, like it. Too easy. Um, super easy, easy way to do it. So then in terms of um, – so we talked about the text. So I'm assuming then um, say there is a tool that the practice uses, it might be like a modelling tool or, or whatever it might be, then there's, I guess, two ways that works. Either they then get a login to the practices version of the tool or they have their own and they – so how does that generally work? So it's, a, it's that request that dictates really what's happening. How? Yeah. Okay. Um, so power planners, if you need a power planner with software, which there are a few in Tango, you specify that on the job. I need a power planner that has their own software. Right. And then they're the ones that will quote on the job. Yeah. Um, if you do have your own software with a power planner log on, beautiful. You put that on there. And then the power planner would, you, and they do it in various ways, you know, using LastPass or yep. there, it's all those sort of things that you're probably familiar with. Um, yep. That's how they get access to the system. And that way you can change your password and all that sort of stuff. Um, the other thing you can do is get a confidentiality agreement and do that through Tango. Yep. So they can't even start a job or see any client data till they, you can, you, there's a templated one on there you can use, and that way you've got that. You get both get a copy, 
and that's okay. done before you even get access. Yep. To that end, have you found, and you don't need to name names, but have you found, um, are, there any, yeah, <laughs> are there any licensees that struggle with this as a concept or are most pretty comfortable with it? You know, which, do you find that in this day and age that sort of they understand that advisors need access to resources? Uh, I would say the smaller boutique licensees are very comfortable, like they're the ones that are comfortable with it. Yeah. And it makes sense. They know they're working with smaller businesses. Yeah. The larger businesses, I think, still trying to get their head around it. And I totally understand it's because of the data. They're yep. probably in bigger targets. Yeah. Um, and they want more control over what's right. going on. So right. they're the ones. But I do have some bigger licensees on there. But I think that's uh, the one where I have to go and do a bit more extra work to get them over the okay. line. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, it's for me. Um, I feel like I'm like the zero of financial pl- I'm for small business, yeah. and I just feel like I don't want you know. There's a whole cohort of little businesses that need support. How yeah. do I give it to them easily? So I'm not too fussed if the bigger licensees want to go with the bigger ones. Yeah, I just want to sort of look after the little guys. <laughs> Yeah, and look, I think because it is so interesting, um, we were reflecting on this uh, late last year and early this year where we've had a couple of people go on maternity leave, and all which is great, you know, and we plan ahead and do all of that. But there will be, it, it, it's not, I like particularly if they're not taking a year or even longer off. If it's you know maybe it's the five months, then it's very hard to actually hire somebody for that period. Like yep. that yeah. is very difficult to do. Um, yes. Whereas if you can try and reallocate some of the tasks and then, okay, these things we're going to be, you know, passing on to an external provider, that makes a huge amount of sense. And and that's, you I know? have that a lot with them, Peter, exactly. So overflow, so you're really busy at this time and need yeah. overflow um, or you've got people that are away. So you can even set up a, like a ongoing relationship yep. with this person for one yep. day a week so we can do that as well just to cover you during that period yeah um the other thing you can do which i'm not it's a bit different from other power planning thing is we can have a direct access panel right and you can actually build a panel of power planners or whomever that you want on your panel and you can send them work directly so you kind okay. of have a little team on tango okay so, so you could build i've got two people away to leave i want to build three or four panelists yep and then you can send them work to one too many. So anyone who's available, pick up this job or one to one. So you can do that as well. Yeah. Perfect. And, and look, those sort of things, we probably overthink using those things, you know, and, and we'll do, oh, should we or not? And, you know, ma- you know, maybe it's before you even need it, give it a whirl such that then when you do, <laughs> you've already, yeah. you know, brushed off the cobwebs of how it's all going to work um, yeah. and everybody's ready for it. Um, but you're right, overflow. And uh, look, a lot of planners you talk to now are struggling with volume. Um, and they've got a lot on their plate. And so the ability without actually hiring a resource, the the ability to start just utilising somebody they can, and it doesn't, I like the idea, it doesn't need to be all of it. You know, it could just be the modelling. It could just be that, like, whatever works for them, whatever takes the pressure off, you know, being able to use a resource um, as and when you need it is really powerful. Is there anybody you're finding that's using – the whole process in a really interesting way? You know, like there are any practices yeah. you're like, wow, that so, was cool. So initially um, I had the rework fee just, you know, you put a scope through, it's out of scope now, I'm going to charge a rework fee. However, yeah. what I'm finding is that there's a practice that works with Tango, they do it in a two-stage process. Oh, right. So they go, can you do the modelling for me? And they charge, what, 150 bucks, whatever for yep. the modelling. Yep. Then they would work with them, get the modelling right. Then they would charge an additional fee for the SOA part. So cool. it's like that way you can, you know, do the research, do the modeling with the contractor, and then you can do the SOA later. So I'm um, seeing that change in the Tango and how that, that's being used. I'm actually fixing up Tango to be more of that sort of as well. So you can Peace use mail. it. Yeah. Mm. And so I thought that makes sense because maybe that's maybe that's how it's going to happen. We'll do all the modeling research first and then go to the client. Then you might do the acquired document later. Who knows? But yeah. Yeah, you've got options. Yeah, and particularly depending on the, what the modelling in it, it might be it might be part of almost the early stage that you're charging a one off fee that's a smaller amount initially, and they get to see some visionary stuff, and you do some number crunching, and then the client goes, "Yes, I want to go hard for the you know tens of thousands of dollars plan and the whatever." <laughs> After that, well, then then they do the next stage, so it makes sense to break that up, you yeah. know, in terms of of outsourcing it. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Are there any? So you mentioned so there's the you know, advice document production, there's the modelling, and then you mentioned sort of um, admin or back office. What sort of thing are you seeing that generally gets um, taken advantage of there? Oh, just like FTSs that I do all my, which I don't know where that's going to be. Yeah, so mm-hmm. FTSs or I need, I've had people, I need to code up this document in this software. 
Oh, kids okay. help me code. So we'll have power planners have done coding before. So they'll get in there to code that document. So essentially, wow. if you can think of something to put, I've had people doing marketing blogs. I need someone to write this newsletter. Yep. So someone's really, so there's really good writers on um, Tango, is obviously, Caraplanners write all day, but um, they just pick up all sorts of stuff. So yeah, okay. It's, and it's just, there's another tick box called Other. So if you can think of something, so we've got, yeah, that sort of stuff happens a bit. Um, what else? Yeah. yeah. Anything you can think of that Caraplanners might typically pick up the office because you don't know who else to do it. Yep. Yeah. Try. Yeah. That's on Tango. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that there was some things, though, so there's some stuff you're doing um, down the track that you can't share. Is there anything else that's sort of on the development path or even a blue sky thing down the track? Gee, I'd love it to get to this point, um, you know, if we can get, you know, growth or whatever is required to get to, to get there. Yeah, I just, I would love to be, um, in, in my opinion, because I'm all unsure, that's the other thing to point out, Tango is all unsure. Yep. Um, and I really, my obviously dream goal is to, really train up and have all the power planners and supporting advisors consistently on the ball trying but so um, as well as doing tango and bringing resources i really want to have this academy to train up the back office support right. as well yeah um, so that's obviously what i do but on the horizon hopefully in the next few months there's going to be a new cut tango so it's going to have all sorts of new exciting features cool um that will help really help with that communication and that relationship with your contractor to make it so much easier to work with them so that's my idea. I just want to make this human. Al- it's uh, for me. Financial planning is always going to be human centric, mm-hmm. um, and I really want to bring good humans to the to the pl- to the industry. So that's yeah. my idea. So how do I make working with these humans better? So that's what I'm trying to do. So that's where the next iteration is going to come from. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. Is there anything <laughs> else we've missed about the tech or how it works? Or let me see. No, I think uh, it's it's very like honestly. My biggest tip to anyone who wants to try Tango: sign up, log in. Signing up takes about five minutes. Yep. You can get in there and post a job within two minutes. You don't have to pay to get quotes coming through. If you just want to have a look what's on there, what's happening, just give it a go. Don't be too worried about the forms and all that sort of stuff. You're dealing with humans on the back end that can yep. read stuff. Give it a go. And if you want to chat to me, I can help you out as well. But, um, yeah, it's it's, it's Now, I do shot. actually – actually, you've made me think of one thing. How does payment work? Yeah. Like what's the <laughs> – yeah. yeah. how does that uh, get set up? So it's um, a booking fee I charge, which yep. is incorporated as part of the price. Okay. So the fee that you see quoted by all the power planners and contractors is incorporating GST, my fee and everything. Total cost, And the yep. average fee on, I think it's like four ninety five. last I looked, the SOA yep. fee. So it's, it's quite, and it's because those market forces are happening as well yeah. at times. Yeah. Um, payments, so you can do payments in two ways. For the people that like uh, credit card points, you can pay by credit card. <laughs> <laughs> And then the other way we do, um, I did have bank transfer, but with pay ID and all that sort of stuff, we got too hard, which is yeah. I'm going to bring in shortly. It's just direct debit, so that just okay. gets debited. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's, perfect. it's very easy. Yeah. Very yeah. easy. Okay. Yeah. All good. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to learn you know, more about Tango, then the website link is in the episode show notes, but we've also popped in Melanie's LinkedIn de- details. I'm sure she'd be happy for you to, to nudge her on LinkedIn and she can um, either chat to you or even potentially maybe your licensee if you feel that that's necessary. I'm sure Melanie would be happy to just have a bit of a chat to them and, and allay any fears they might have. Thank you so much for joining us here today and Thanks, sharing, Peter. look, how, how much bandwidth things like Tango can give us, right, as we're all hopefully growing or, or, you know, really shifting and changing what we do for clients. I'm really excited to see resources like this that are going to help us get there. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. So, folks, are you a current client of Tango? I'm really curious if perhaps you've already gone onto the platform, you've Put up, put up a um a bid for some. Oh, sorry, put up a, a job ups for it to be bid on by some of the con- contract power planners. You know, how have you used it? What have you find works? Um, please share your insights on the Ensemble Community platform. Uh, these tools are all the better for us sharing, and so I'd love to hear any tips you have or how you found the experience in using Tango. In terms of my thoughts, you know, <sighs> gee. We've got so many ways we can get bandwidth these days, and I love the idea. For many of you, you may struggle with the concept of offshoring any of your resources to have somebody onshore. That means you can just go to a website, describe it, and you know, based on the different uh, features you might request or the experience or all sorts of things about that particular power planner, their star rating. Hey, it's like Uber, right? So all of these things you can and request, and then get people to bid for. I mean, this is really 
getting over the hurdle of how do I find somebody? Do I have to ask around? You know, I, I need it urgently. I don't have time to actually recruit. Like all of this stuff means we can just get moving. Um, and I find that really exciting. I'm really excited for all of us to be able to have access to resources like this. And I think, you know, this is about deciding where you're going to focus your energies. You know, I actually, um, and as, in fact, as Mel and I were talking, I was reflecting on the fact that, you know, I'm an, as you know, I'm a nerd. My background's in actuarial studies. Um, I feel very comfortable in very complex numbers. And so I often will default to doing some modeling myself just because it's almost like it's, it's sort of one of those b- benign sort of activities that I find almost relaxing as, as sad and embarrassing as that might sound. But to be frank, as we go forward with the sort of thing that that our practice are going to be doing in the future, it won't make sense for me to be spending time doing that. Um, And so having a resource that you can tap into, you can have a specific task you want them to do. I need this many scenarios. I need it to be done like this. Here's an example. Off you go. I mean, that's just fantastic. Um, It's not hiring a whole body. It's not getting a financial analyst into the practice just yet. It's getting some people that can do the job. So I think, you know, we all need to assess where we outsource, where we get extra resources, how we get ourselves more bandwidth, how do we be able to see either more clients or maybe it's give yourself a day off a week, whatever it is to let you do things the way you want to do it. um, Then, you know, that's actually what we all need to assess on a regular basis. Now, on a similar vein, this episode will actually be one of the last few that I will be doing as host of the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I have loved and do love doing these episodes and getting to really dig into all these tools available to all of us out there. However, for me, 2024 has a really specific mission for both myself and my business. And so, like I said before, choosing you know where your time is spent, then um, I'm going to be actually handing over the reins, um, hosting of the podcast to an awesome host who shall remain secret for just a little bit longer. So please keep on listening over the next few weeks to find out who, um, and we'll share that. And in fact, we'll even do a handover episode where we chat and we get to know that person much, much better. Um, now, if you're glad to see the back of me, feel free to send me a speak pipe message. Um, the link is in the show notes, or perhaps there's some weird podcast host habit or tick that I have that you want to call out. Um, I'd love to hear it all. So head over to speakpipe.com forward slash Peter D, P-E-I-T-A-D, and let me have it, folks. Tell me all the weirds and wonderfuls and all the, the silly things I've been doing in all these episodes. I would love to hear it from you. Now, as you know, there's only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, and that's avid curiosity, folks. And to help you build that app habit, today's Curiosity Corner website that I wanted to take a look at is Task Heat. Now, you can find it, well, look, the link is actually quite long. (laughs) It's E-Y-E-N dot F-R forward slash task heat. But if you just Google task heat, I'm sure you'll find it. And also we'll put the link in the show notes. Now, their tagline is bring a sense of flow to your to-do lists. Your ideas will become a sweeping master plan. Now, I'm bringing this to your attention because it's got quite a different approach to to to-do lists. And I could see this being really useful to plan a big holiday or a major event as actually the way you map out the to-dos for a project in this app is you do it through a flow chart, would you believe? So it's sort of like you would on your whiteboard. It's like, oh, this thing first, arrow, that thing next, these branch out, then we've got to do that. So, you know, it's, it's actually really quite natural and organic in the way that you plan them out. Um, it then has tags you can apply to each of the individual steps. You could tag some steps with, say, shopping list, or some steps might have paperwork as a tag, so that then it groups all of those tasks itself under another heading. So sort of separately groups them. So if you are out and about and you've got to do some shopping for your upcoming major holiday, then you can see all the items rather than having to go through the flow and try try and collect them yourself. So it's, and it also of course shows you just the tasks you need to see today, but this type of sort of visual layout is quite unusual in to-do lists. And so if you've ever struggled um, with to do task sort of tools, particularly for 
you know, bigger projects, you know, day-to-day client stuff, I'm not so sure that it would really apply, but for, you know, your maybe personal projects you're working on, maybe you've got a home reno you're doing or a major holiday you're going on, or even maybe an internal one in the practice, then, you know, this, this visual layout could really cut through the clutter for you. And I think it could be an interesting tool to consider for clients. You know, if they're embarking on something really significant, it might be moving house or it might be the first big trip when they're retiring. You know, you could suggest a tool like this that will really help them map out all the elements they need to think about um, and it could give them some real value. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Let me know how you go and I'm sure you'll come up with even more creative ways (laughs) that you could use the tool. So that's Task Heat. Well, That's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And we are rapidly coming up to March, aren't we, folks? Who can believe it? And, of course, in March we have International Women's Day. And right now I still do have mm, one or two time slots available. So if you or your group or maybe even your employer would like an engaging session for your International Women's Day event, then I have a keynote that combines uh, Taylor Swift, the music industry's lack of executive leadership and the lessons that can give us in the broader economic landscape about, um, you know, the disparity between women's roles in driving progress and in operating in businesses, you know, and versus their low representation in decision-making positions. It's a fun uh, session. Um, It's got lots of interesting tips and tricks and really gets people engaged. But then what it does is actually delve into how personal finance literacy and empowerment are crucial first steps towards broader economic empowerment in any industry, really. If you'd like to know more, you know what to do. Please reach out to me on LinkedIn. That's LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week, I promise. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 